options, no shelters, because some people have a better capability of taking advantage of those things than others. How about a you know, flat and, tax and rate the, the of zero? Yeah. Spending so much money. I'll uh, mention that. Uh, I do this every debate. My mother taught me <laughs> Harry Brown's proposal. How far back would you have to go so that you could completely eliminate the personal income tax? Right now it's 2004. Okay. Could we live with a government that was the size it was in 2004? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would we have a competitive advantage to other countries? Yes. Yes, but we won't do that. No, they've been working too hard on growing their little baby. Yeah. Absolutely fair. And get rid of all of the incredible uh, regulations because every regulation is a tax. It's a you know, on goods and services. And we had 81,000 pages of them last year, a record number, yeah. by our unelected, unaccountable bureaucracy that stays there for a lifetime. Because of regulations, a poor person notices that, a rich person does not. Middle class may notice it when they get to the cash register, and everything is costing more money. And we are killing our, our, our people like this. And Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton will say, it's those evil rich people. It's not the evil rich people, it's the evil government. That is that is putting all these regulations on us so that we can't. Here's uh, all right. Ben Carson's yep. new uh, political picture. I think that's his Twitter <laughs> picture. Just now, it's called corporate inversion. It's what is what is he patron saint of uh, Rob? Right now, corporations <laughs> by He's the patron saint. I think of forced vaccination there you and, go. Uh, and hand <laughs> gestures. Leave them behind. They're leaving because uh, of taxes, but they're also leaving because they can't get their money back in. And everybody agrees, Democrats and Republicans, that it should come back in, but they can't get along. They can't even make a deal. Here's a the case. They both agree. They can't make a deal. We have to do something. Corporate inversion is one of the biggest problems we have. So many companies are going to leave our country. Which is why we raise it. Senator, Senator Rubio, thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank you. One of the biggest fiscal challenges facing our country is our entitlement programs, particularly Social Security and Medicare. What policies will you put forward to make sure these I think our welfare system is corporate welfare problem. <laughs> and I want to thank you for holding a substantive debate where we can have debates about these key issues on taxes. Here's the one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to have something that Ted described in his tax plan. It's called the value-added value tax. It is a tax you find in many companies in Europe where basically businesses now will have to pay a tax both on the money they make, but they also have to pay taxes on the money they pay their employees. And that's why they have it in Europe, because it's a way to blindfold the people. That's what Ronald Reagan said. Ronald Reagan opposed the VAT tax because he said it was a way to blindfold the people so the true cost of government was not there for them. Now you can... You can we do that with the Federal Reserve. We borrow money so that the true cost of government doesn't show up to us. In Europe, they do a VAT. But also raising that VAT tax. And that VAT tax is really bad for seniors. Because seniors, if they are retired, are no longer learning or earning an income from a job. And therefore, they don't get the income tax break. But their prices are going to be higher because the VAT tax is embedded in both the prices that business... You know, I just saw an article the other day how a record number of retirees are re-entering the workforce. Mm -hmm. Of course, taking, you know, in little McDonald's-type jobs. But, you know, it's pretty much the state of where the things are in this country. They will have to if these guys cut their Social Security benefits. Right. And he's absolutely right about the VAT tax. So VAT tax is a horrible idea. Let's see him defend that. Maybe he'll be as dishonest about that as he is a natural born citizen. VAT is imposed <laughs> as a sales tax when you buy a good. This is a business flat tax. It is imposed on businesses. And a critical piece that Marco seems to be missing is that this 16% business flat tax enables us to eliminate the corporate income tax. It goes away. It enables us to eliminate the death tax. If you're a farmer, if you're a rancher, if you're a small business owner, the death tax is gone. We eliminate the payroll tax. We eliminate the Obamacare taxes. And listen, there's a real difference between Marco's tax plan and mine. Mine gives every American a simple flat tax of 10%. Marco's top tax rate is 35 percent. My tax plan... Here we go. We're back to the... Okay, I'm going to tax this percentage and these brackets and so forth and so on. I'm going to have a flat tax or a... But we're going to leave the state tax and the property tax and the county tax and the sales tax and every other tax we can tax on new tax. <laughs> 
and again, you know, what they could do is they could go back to 2004 and just go to zero on the personal income tax, but they won't do that. That my simple flat tax is the best tax plan of any of the individuals on this stage because it produces economic growth, it raises wages, and it helps. I hope they don't go into this thing again where they start with the rates and comparing each other's plans. Nine, nine, nine. nine. <laughs> yeah, nine, nine, nine. But you're not yeah, as in uh, the German, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> do not do this again. <laughs> Number two, in fact, Ronald Reagan's treasury, when mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan's treasury... Dude, I think that's like the fifth time he said Ron, Ronald Reagan, two yeah. minutes. Yeah. New IRS agents to collect it. The second point, it doesn't eliminate the corporate tax or the payroll tax. Businesses will now have to pay 16% on the money they make. They will also have to pay 16% on the money they pay their employees. So there are people watching tonight in business. If you are now hit on a 60% tax on both your income and on the wages you pay your employees, where are you going to get that money from? You're going to... Oh. Oh, just about 15 more minutes there, Melissa McEwen. So how much longer this garbage nightmare is going to last? Right there with you, sister. see the true cost of government. Now, 16% is what the rate 10 wants it at. So what really hides the true cost of government is the Federal Reserve. And they ought to criticize... Uh, Ted Cruz for saying he doesn't even want to know uh, what the Federal Reserve is doing. I mean, why wouldn't you want to even audit them? I don't want to know what they're doing in there. Why would I want to know? Exactly. Why would <laughs> so you want ridiculous. to audit them? This private corporation. Every, everything the government likes to get their hands in, but they don't want to get their hands in that. I mean, yeah. this debate that's on the floor of the Senate um, to actually answer the question you asked. That's really where the smoke and mirrors occurs. And that's why we focus on the Federal Reserve is because that's what enables these people to do what uh, state governments can't do, uh, and that is to just uh, ignore the the, the uh, deficit each year and just keep adding it to the debt. That no one wants to answer entitlements up here is because it's hard. It's a hard problem. And I'm the only one up on this stage who back in April put forward a detailed entitlement reform plan that will save over $1 trillion, save Social Security, save Medicare, and avoid this. Avoid what Hillary Rodham Clinton will do to you, because what she will do is come in and she will raise Social Security taxes. Bernie Sanders has already said it, and she is just one or two more poll drops down from even moving further left than she's moved already to get to the left of Bernie on this. We have seniors out there who are scared to death because this Congress, this one that my entire life. They've been holding Social Security over the heads of seniors and saying the other party is going to cut off your your money. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that Social Security has always been designed as a Ponzi scheme. They picked the age of 65 when it was done in Germany for the first time. Bismarck knew that was the life expectancy. It has always been a lie. Now that people are living longer, they want to raise the age so they don't have to pay you the money. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact of the matter is that, yeah, there's a part of Social Security that is an entitlement program, that is a welfare program. But for the people that have paid 7.62% uh, uh, and the employer has had a matching thing, so you're 15, uh, what is it, 15-2 or whatever, uh, of, of your wages going into that, your entire life, uh, for them not to give you that back at the end of your life and say, well, because we mean tested it, means tested it, and you don't need it. That's what Chris Christie wants to do. That is an absolute outrage. Right. It's nothing but just theft by the federal government. But, of course, that's what they specialize in. They're taking a quick break. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back here with more live coverage from InfoWars, live analysis and commentary of this sixth GOP debate. We'll be right back. Welcome back to InfoWars live coverage of the sixth GOP debate. They just came back from break, and they're asking Donald Trump about his vast wealth. Will he disentangle himself from that? Here's his answer. About my company. It's peanuts I want to make. I want to use that same up here, whatever it may be, to make America rich again and to make <laughs> America great again. I have Ivanka and Eric and Don sitting there. Run the company, kids. Have a good time. I'm going to do it for America. <laughs> Yep. So you'll put your assets in a blind trust? I would put it in a blind trust. Well, I don't know if it's a blind trust if Ivanka, Don, and Eric run it, but is that a blind trust? I don't know. But I would probably have my children run it with my executives, and I wouldn't ever be involved because I wouldn't care about anything but our country. Anything. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Governor Christie, uh, going back. Why would you ask that question? Days, I don't understand. You have been praised. Of course, they're not going to ask anybody, as we were saying during the break, they're not going to ask anybody about uh, whether uh, Ed Snowden is a traitor or not, because they would all agree with that. And as we said, they could probably go down the line and they could debate as to what punishment. You know, should he be uh, hung or electrified or uh, shot or water tortured for 14 years at Gitmo? Um, Former NYC police chief Ray Kelly says that police are being less proactive because they're being overly scrutinized and second guess and they're afraid of being sued or thrown in jail. What would you do as president to address that? Well, first off, uh, let's face it, the FBI director, Jim Comey, who's a friend of mine who I worked with as U.S. Attorney. Name dropping. Jersey, he was yeah. U.S. Attorney in Manhattan. He <laughs> said it. There's a chill wind blowing through law enforcement in this country, and here's why. The President of the United States and... Well, the issue is, general, because we always hear that if you're the, the, uh, the private citizen and you're driving your vehicle and you get pulled over, I mean, you don't know why. If you're not doing anything wrong, you don't have anything to worry about. But time and time again, we see uh, these things escalate, you know, yes. into epic proportions. But for the same thing with law enforcement, if the law enforcement officer is not doing anything wrong, he shouldn't have any fear about going about his day to day business and enforcing the laws of the land. Jakari, the reason there's a chill wind blowing through law enforcement right now that Chris Christie is talking about is because we have phones that can record what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Always in the past, it was the word of the victim versus law enforcement. And as you were on that jury selection thing, they ask you a question. Do you believe that an officer in uniform could uh, uh, lie? And of course, right. if you say, yeah, I believe they Would could. Would you believe his testimony just because, because he's, he's a law police officer? Yeah, right. exactly. So yeah, if you say, yeah, I think it's possible for somebody, even though they're wearing a uniform, to tell a lie, you're dismissed. Yeah. Oh, dismissed. sorry, we don't need you for jury duty. Thank you. And understand, too, that law enforcement is interacting in a very, very different way. We've pointed this out many times, a very different way with the public than they have in the past. They have been taught to shoot first and in places where this has been the worst like New Mexico at the State Police Academy a veteran there instru a veteran instructor said this is a shoot first curriculum I'm not going to teach it they said fine you're fired mm -hmm. I mean they have changed this and it is a, a federalization of the police uh -oh. here we got a, a got uh, demonstration there was a little Somebody bit of protesting Kasich? <laughs> it's not like they were saying. Uh, you've had to deal with controversial shootings sure. in the United State. What do you make of Chicago's move recently to sort of retrain police? It's not like they're saying stand with Rand, but... Not so quick oh. to use their guns. Well, I, I, re I created a task force uh, well over a year ago. And the purpose was to bring law enforcement, community people, um, clergy, and the person that I named is one response chair, force. Lady by the name of <laughs> Trump, we know what that's about. <laughs> Democrat ran against one of my friends and our head of public safety. And they sat down as a group trying to make sure that we can begin to heal some of these problems that we see between community and police. And they came back with 23 recommendations. One of is is a statewide use of deadly force. And it is now being put into place every place across the state of Ohio. Secondly, a policy on recruiting and was it in Ohio where they just shot that kid who had the BB for, gun? Was that in for Ohio? For or? Training. Oh, uh, Tamir Rice. Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those things. I, the, you know what? I can't keep them straight. Yeah, it's right. Right. So but yeah, that was in Ohio. Police officer once get home and, at night. And uh, you know, along those lines, you know, you could. I mean, that that was pretty outrageous that the guy just pulls the car up, jumps out, shoots, and shoots that young kid dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then sub subsequent to that. You've now had a situation where a guy who was on patrol, uh, uh, parole, had a BB gun, and they have gone against him for uh, a violation of parole, saying he's got a gun. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you going to say, Rob? Wow. State. And we just got a word that we want Rand was chanted. That's what we heard. Good. Uh, yeah. Mikhail Good. came in. He was has the debate on also on another TV, and, and that's what they were okay. chanting. And I think there's Good. even some Twitter tweets about it right now. We we'll want Rand. Up one Good. Yeah. And of course, Fox would not respond to that. They, they were like, "Oh, well, who could?" The name oh, that will not be sneeze. mentioned. Balderdash. <laughs> The budget that paid down a half. But of course, he has no poll support whatsoever, so no. we got to kick him yeah. out of the debate and put in the Ohio governor. And, and that or is just Jeb such, Bush. That is just such a rigged process. I mean, the fact that Bloomberg and Fox would connive to withhold the reporting of those results of that poll. Uh, again, three polls finishing on Sunday. One of them was embargoed until for 36 hours. 
It was a Bloomberg uh, poll, and Fox says, yeah, we're not going to count that. And he would have been equal to Jeb. Then the entire population of South Carolina. What's that? The CBO says your 2013 immigration... Okay, good. Let's go to Joe Biggs. He's in South Carolina, right outside where the debate is being held, and he has somebody there. Uh, Joe. Right, so, uh, this is Joe Biggs live outside of the uh, North uh, Charleston Coliseum where the GOP debate is uh, just now finishing up, and I'm with, uh, what's your name? Kylie Arena. And uh, why are you guys out here tonight? We're out here trying to stop the spreading of hatred. Um, we're just